Welcome to the Utah Podcapalians. Now, this is a podcast from the Episcopal Diocese of Utah, where we talk about our unusual church, our unique church, in our unique and unusual place that we all occupy, Utah. And we talk about topics that I think are of interest to all of us in the Episcopal Church, but certainly in our community. And it's kind of where we as a church, as a faith tradition, take part in our community. And today, our topic is going to be one that is very near and dear to the Episcopal Diocese. For many years, the Episcopal Diocese has been, uh, at most times, the most active participant in the Pride Parade in Salt Lake City, which we're really proud of because it's, it is part of the Episcopal Church DNA. And um, we know that we have had a lot of participation and we've had some really wonderful experiences during Pride Week, during the parade, during some of the festivities. We're going to talk all about that. So in order to talk about it, we have those who are really kind of leading the charge here at the diocese. We have the Reverend Danny Lee, who is at St. Mary's in Provo, uh, one of our newest priests in the diocese. And that is so cool because she has been for years so active as a lay person and then in becoming a candidate to become a priest and now has uh, just done wonderful stuff at the St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Provo. We have Terry Palmer who goes to St. James and who has taken on the very simple task of running the parade for us. I know it's just probably something that's taken two, three minutes of your week. Not really at all. So let's get into what we have going and um, we'll get into a little bit of our heritage on how we've been um, very big supporters and of the uh, various activities during Pride Week. But first of all, let's get some facts and figures down, the who, what, when, and where of Pride Week. And maybe Terry, you can start out with the parade. We're gonna wanna know where all the people can meet, where they meet, where they gather, uh, kind of the particulars. Let's start out with times for the parade, times to gather, and then we're going to get to the to the uh, festivities that take place around the city county building, of which uh, the Reverend Danny Lee will help us out. So Terry, first of all, let's get the first thing established. When is the parade? The yeah. hours, where and when should Episcopalians and other friends meet? Yeah, that's great. So we're actually starting at the end because the festival starts on the 2nd, but the parade isn't until the 4th. So Sunday the 4th, we'll be meeting along the parade route, and I didn't bring the actual address, but I will get that out to the, the parishes. But we are um, entry number 157. They've kind of changed the route this year a little bit um, because of some construction downtown. Um, but we don't have to meet until about 10 o'clock. So that's the good news is we don't have to be there really early. We'll sort of be taking off about 11 o'clock. Um, the parade route is is about six, seven miles. So it's a little bit of a, a walk, um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, we'll have banners. We encourage people to bring banners from their own parishes um, to, to, to walk with as well. Um, and it's just gonna be a really great time, a little warm. We'll have water, we'll have sunscreen. Um, we'll take care of everybody who, who gets there. For years and years, we have had the tradition of having quite the contingency of folks from throughout the diocese. And, and of course, we do want to emphasize this is not the only uh, parade in the state. And this is not the only time that uh, we are uh, supportive of uh, Pride Week and the various activities. But we are talking about Salt Lake, which um, is one of the largest of the parades in the country, isn't it? And it is. And I found out yesterday, um, someone just told me that we were the largest mar uh, walking group in the last parade. And I had put down that we'd have about 50 people. And now I'm thinking we'll, we'll probably have more <laughs> than that. So I'm going to have to bump that up. Yeah, I think we've seen far more than 50 at times that have gone through this, all having fun. So we're talking Sunday the 4th is the parade. 
Um, our part, we meet around 10 o'clock. The parade starts a little earlier, doesn't it, generally? When do you know the um, actual times of the parade? Yeah, the parade starts about 10. So it's, um, we, but we're at the end. We're towards the end. Um, okay, well, yeah. so the whole parade kind of leads up to us. It's sort of like Christmas parades where it leads up to Santa Claus. This one leads go. up to the Episcopal Diocese of Utah. Well chosen. Good work in getting that position. All <laughs> right, Danny, um, that isn't all that we're doing. I know that the whole festivities start um, two days earlier and that um, there's quite the uh, um, activities around city county building. You've been very active in, um, in the past with our booth and uh, tell me about what we have going there. Yeah, correct. So we've we've had a booth at the Pride Festival for, well, we started in 2017, but then during COVID, there was no festival, so we didn't participate into any of that. So I think this would be our fourth mm -hmm. um, time that we actually that we actually put a booth and we stay there and talk to people. So most of the things that I've done in the past have been to have a lot of materials on what is the Episcopal Church? What are our beliefs? Um, then a list with all the churches in the state and where, where they're located, who's the clergy, some information on that. And I also had a lot of uh, different cards with prayers printed on them. And then people had, we had stickers and people could decorate their prayer cards and then take them with them. That was um, quite successful in the past. And this year we're going to, at Ingrid's uh, advice, we're going to make it a bit more fun. We got one of those wheels for prizes mm -hmm. and we got a variety of small prizes for people. Um, and we're trying to get some bigger prizes for a raffle, like a prayer shawl. And one of my parishioners, Shauna Gage, she offered to make um, prayer beads, Anglican prayer beads for one of the prizes. So we're trying to get a few more substantial things for, for a bigger price to generate a bit more interest in the booth. But the best part of it is just being there and talking to people. You know, people have a lot of questions. They are, some of them might be searching, some of them might have given up on searching and this might be a glimmer of hope. There's some anger towards our presence there, which is not um, unusual or, um, odd considering that not all faith traditions have been kind with LGBTQ people mm -hmm. so that's always understandable and it's always um, it can be a healing encounter if both parts are open to conversation well, so that yeah. has been that has been very moving to me to be able to speak to people for people to be vulnerable and the best part of being there for two days is the fact that you know people can stay there and have a conversation. It's not just a parade moving, you know, moving along. It's an interaction. It it is a ministry, and you have been so faithful and dedicated to that ministry in in, in the past. Um, what are the hours of the festivities that we will have a booth? So the festival starts Saturday morning at 11 and 11 to one, it's called Teen Pride. So it's more geared towards teens. Um, I've asked Ingrid to make sure we have camp counselors there with information right. on Camp Tuttle and all the, the activities there. And then at one o'clock, the normal Pride Festival begins and it goes to late at night, I think. I yeah. don't plan on having the booth manned all that <laughs> up until you know midnight, but we're thinking about being there until about 10 o'clock at night at least. And then Sunday, it starts at 11, but um, a lot of the people that are volunteering are gonna be in the parade. So we're probably not gonna have anyone at the booth until after the parade is over. And then that's gonna go until about 10 or 11 at night. Okay. Um, you you did bring up that it's a ministry, and and I know there's so much joy and fun and things that you know on 
on the activities, but there's that very serious side too that I think you talk about the ministry and and particularly those who have been in the margins, uh, those that have been in the uh, in the shadows. Our our diocese has adopted the um, uh, phrase "We thrive in the margins of," um, and 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 certainly um, this is an example of that. Um, the conversations must be sometimes very heartwarming, sometimes very difficult, sometimes as people are are um, searching, or maybe they, like you say, they've given up. Because this podcast is heard by so many and by people that um, perhaps are out there searching or out um, looking or have had bad experiences or know that um, they felt alienated and uh, for good reason they felt alienated what are some of the things that you tell folks that just say look you have a booth here that's pretty amazing which it really shouldn't be amazing this is part of faith and part of outreach to all but what do you tell people that feel discouraged um sometimes i share my own story my own journey coming from a faith tradition that was not affirming and finding finding my own place in the world and learning slowly how to accept that God is more than organized religion and that sometimes we have a limited understanding of God's intentions. And if we keep searching, we might get a better answer. Um, it's when people are hurt, you can throw doctrine at them and it's not going to do anything. But when it's a vulnerable conversation about your own experience, that opens up a door. It might not mean that they're going to jump at the chance and start coming to church the next day. And that's really not, I mean, it's great when that happens, but that's not my um, primary intention. My primary intention is for us to be part of the healing of the world, whether that means more active participants in our religion or not. Do people just sometimes appreciate the fact that here you are a priest and that you want to talk to them? Does that? Uh, well, I've not that? been a priest at Pride yet. Right. But yeah. I mean, here you are that, or or just even when you were representing the diocese in, as a lay member that you want to talk, people do like to converse, don't they? Yes, some of them do. And some of them are genuinely curious on how, how is it that a church is here? Um, some of them are angry because they've already internalized um, the fact that they're not um, loved by God. And having a church be there as a reminder is very painful. Um, Sometimes people are very joyful because they might have heard about the Episcopal Church from somewhere and then, you know, they're not curious enough to go out of their way to actually see it. But when it pops up as a booth with someone available to talk, then it's it's convenient. Actually, the year we had most interactions was um, was the year when Pete Buttigieg was running for president. I oh, think. really? <laughs> so people would just walk by the booth and they'd be like hey is this Mayor Pete's church <laughs> oh and it is by the it way is. it is not, not here in Utah but uh he's a very faithful Episcopalian and yes and it was very convenient to to sort of start a conversation oh, isn't like that, that something I I didn't know that well Terry let's go back to you and talk a little bit about um uh, being in the parade, uh, it's it's a whole different feeling on one. We're talking about people who come up to the booth and talk. And this is one where we're very visible walking down the street with our banners, with various um, uh, statement in that, but also sharing with those in the parade. I know there's probably a lot of interaction with that. And with just um, going out, what kind of a feeling do you get when you're you're walking um, with others and are just uh, 
celebrating the whole idea that we have a, a, a pride festival and a pride parade. What feeling do you get? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, it's, uh, it's, first of all, it's fun. It's always a really good time, but I just like to add to what Danny said and also what you said about, you know, those who are living in the margins, you know, for my day job, I work with those who have experienced trafficking. And um, just recently I was um, talking with somebody who uh, had lived experience in trafficking, but then also um, identified as non-binary. And they said to me, you mean there's a church that would actually welcome me? And I was just almost in tears. Um, and, and the conversation was so great and they were sort of like, Episcopal what? <laughs> they, you know, they had no idea what that was, but um, it, I think we are being discovered. And, you know, with trafficking survivors and those with um, lived experience in the margins, I think um, we find that there is a lot of religious trauma um, and especially locally. And I think um, getting over that trauma is difficult. And I think, you know, being at the festival, having the booth, being in the parade, um, just shows that, you know, we are, we do welcome everyone. We, we are a welcoming church where people can come um, and feel like they are um, accepted the way they are. Um, and I think that seeing us there, I think it's just a great representation of that. Um, but the parade itself, I think for me personally, um, I just think it's, it's, a, it's great. I think I love it. I think um, it's one thing that we're, you know, we say things like love is love, but, you know, as transgender women of color are probably the most um, vulnerable to mm -hmm. any kind of exploitation right now, we're showing them that we're there for them, um, that we love them and care for them and that we will care for, continue to care for them and, and not add trauma. And, and I'll just add, I, I'm so thrilled that Camp Tuttle is joining us and the young yeah. people I think young people rightfully so are a little jaded <laughs> at religion. And so I love that. And I love, you know, one of my kids came to me recently and said, um, thank you for raising me in a religion that didn't hurt me. And wow. um, so I think that's huge. Um, I have close, close family members who are part of the LGBTQ community. And I just, you know, I love that, that we are not hurting people, that we're actually not doing harm, that we are actually, um, there to accept and help people who um, are otherwise exploited or hurt um, by other religions. Yes, it is a day that, and, and speaking to those who are Episcopalians who are um, either watching or listening to this podcast, um, that you make a very big point that it's, it's important that um, we reach out and let people know that Indeed, all are welcome, all are made in God's image, and that um, this is a way we can um, tell people that message. You know, Episcopalians are not usually the first ones to want to stand up and go out into the community. Um, certainly a very passive um, group. Uh, it's, it's hard to no Episcopalian is going to go door to door. No Episcopalian is going to stand on a street corner. But this is a time where I guess it's very important that we, we do go reach out and say, this is a core of our religion. And certainly um, as our diocese, um, and diocese, by the way, a group of churches that make up the Episcopal Church in Utah, as we rebrand ourselves to some of our really core commitments, this is one of the biggest um, uh, commitments that we have that, yes, indeed, you are welcome as part of um, LGBTQ uh, community or anyone else that is in the margins and you have mentioned some of the vulnerabilities. So in a midst of all of this joy, this fun, and, and a lot of smiles, a lot of fun walking down the street, there is that serious message in the parade too. Do you find that you interact with some of the other people in the parade um, that maybe have those same questions that have um, approached uh, the Reverend uh, Danny Lee about? 
You know, I think in the parade, we will see people along the sidelines who, as Danny mentioned, um, are, sorry, if I skip there for a minute, I can start over. Um, I think as um, Reverend Danny now <laughs> had mentioned, um, you know, there are people who don't want us there and we'll probably see those along the parade route. Um, and uh, that's a little difficult. You know, we have a commandment to love one another and that means loving those who don't love those that we love. Um, and I think that's the hardest part. I think representing ourselves in the parade, being in the parade, um, as you say, we don't go door to door. This is sort of our, our ver version of going door to door. Um, and so we're in the parade, we're visible to those who might be afraid to love those that we love. Um, and so I think in that way, it's great. There, there will be people who don't want us there um, and we'll just smile and move along. And um, you know, the former Bishop Scott was so great in the parade and now with the new Bishop, Phyllis will be joining us as well. And I, I think that's um, that uh, the, the smile on her face will, probably win over a lot of people um, and, and, and the way we behave and, and react and, and I think we'll welcome people as well. I do. You know, you were just saying that it's, um, it's quite the long trek because it is um, Utah's longest parade, as I understand, and it is one of the largest uh, parades, uh, pride parades in, in the country. So um, you do have to have your walking shoes. Um, I assume you want to invite people to the parade. You want to invite people to march and to watch. Yeah, I mean, Episcopalians, Episcopals, everybody who wants to come, family members. Um, the only restriction, don't bring your dogs. Um, their paws get burned on the pavement, so please don't bring your pets. But otherwise, yes, bring your family. It's you know it's a slow pace. It's not a fast pace. So um, everyone from two to to a hundred can come and join us. Um, and yeah, we want as many people there as possible. And I guess even if some said, "Oh, six seven miles," I don't know if I could do that. You'd be okay if people just walk for a while, wouldn't you? Yeah, they can. Join and uh, there are stickers that we have to give out at the beginning, so they have to have a, a sticker. But if they decide to to step out of the parade and and go and join the crowd, that's fine, of course. You'll have water. You'll have uh... sunscreen, water, okay. yeah, fans. I'm planning to go get some fans. So, what are some of the banners you talked about? Banners. What are some of the things that um, we have? publicly proclaimed as we walk down the street? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I know that we have the very large Episcopal banner um, mm -hmm. and we'll have that at the beginning of the parade. I believe that says all are welcome. I know that that's what we say um, in the in, when they announce us, that's what they're going to say. Um, but any of the parishes who wanna bring their own parish banners are welcome to bring those as well. So it's, it's, it's not like a, a formalized check with Terry. She will approve your banner. Bring what you want. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, I, I think <laughs> we're a polite society. I think we'll probably be okay with that. Yeah. Oh, I understand that. But yeah. I meant it would be good <laughs> yes. that the various churches um, that are being represented carry their banners. Absolutely. So yeah. That's what we've done in the past. That's mm -hmm. what I'm. That's where I'm going with that. That yeah. uh, if you're from one of our uh, many churches, um, this is an appropriate time to give your name and who we are and that um, we are very, we're very visible in this parade. Um, Danny, I want to ask you again, um, like I asked, do you need some more volunteers for your booth? Uh, do we need um, some help on that? What um, what do we need? Yes, I would, I would love some volunteers. I would also love um, if anyone has um, some gifts that they would like to offer for the raffle, if they have any prayer shawls or other, you know, religious adjacent objects mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that they would like to offer, we would love to be able to give more things in the raffle. Um, volunteers are welcome. I'm not sure yet how many free tickets we get because with um, 
with the booth rental, we do get a certain number of, of tickets for the volunteers, but they've changed from year to year. So I'm not sure how many we'll get this year, but I'll, I'll give out that information. Um, yeah, and I think other than that, we're good. Hey, for information, um, I know there will be people that will be listening to this and say, okay, how do I get involved? How do I uh, find out this information? I know we'll have things in our diocesan newsletter. We'll have things on the website. Any other way that they can just get that type of information so that we can keep this, uh, we, can, we can keep the interest at the level that um, we know is out there. Well, those two places are excellent places to go for information. There is a flyer with my name and phone number where people can reach me. Um, that is both in the newsletter, I think, and on the okay. diocesan um, Facebook website. page. It will be on the website. We're going to have a special uh, website information. And, and just so that folks know, if you go to our website, uh, the um, Episcopal Diocese website, episcopal-ut.org. And there will be, um, first of all, this podcast will be on there, but also there will be um, a page of information with this type of, of um, all that contacts and what we're going to do so that everybody will have an opportunity to find out where we're going. Well, we've covered a lot of serious stuff now. Now I want to get to um, ask that big question, and you've hinted to it. I'll start again with the parade. Terry, is it fun? I know it's fun, but what makes it fun? What makes this put a smile on your face? Yeah, I mean, it's fun to be with other Episcopalians from all over the state. Um, it's uh, it's fun to see other people there. The crowd is always just really up. Um, and they're always happy to see us when, you know, when it's announced that we're there. Um, it's it's uh, very welcoming for us as well um, to see that people understand what we're doing, understand what we're about, and, and are welcoming to us as well. Um, I've been walking with my dog uh, a few miles every morning to get ready for it. Uh, you know, it, it was a little longer, but it's a, it's a nice slow pace. So I think it's just, it's just nice to be with other people who, um, who are understanding of the community that we need to serve, understanding of their vulnerabilities, but also understanding their beauty and um, allowing people to, uh, to be themselves and to, to celebrate their individuality and, um, and, and, the, and and you know their God given um, uh, their their God given talents and abilities and um, beauty. It's just really really nice to be there. It's it, it's a hard atmosphere to describe. So I I hope people will come and and experience it. Um, and I think going to the festival and having our table our booth at the the festival is going to be. For me, it's going to be fun to see that there too, and I can't wait to participate in that as well. Um, and yeah, people are dressed up, and it's the colors, obviously, of the rainbow. It's it's really, really a fun event, um, and I encourage people to come. And if you can't come for the parade, come for the festival and and go see um, Danny and take a photo with her. And um, <laughs> it, yeah, and and this, uh, and then for that teen part, you know, go see those Camp Tuttle people. I think that's amazing. So yeah, yeah, everybody come. It, it is important for the teens. It's important again for anyone who feels disenfranchised, anyone who feels that they've kind of been left out or alone. Um, that's what we're here for, I, I think. And as an Episcopalian, it's a proud moment to go out and to practice what we believe and what we believe very firmly is that not only do we thrive in the margins, but we thrive in the margins because of a absolute commitment, not just a belief, a commitment to the concept that um, all are in God's image and that we are here to uh, welcome all in God's image. And I know, Danny, you probably feel the same way when you're 
at that booth on the moments I know there are those serious moments, but then there are those that it's just fun, isn't it, to be sitting in the middle of that marvelous festivities and to see just people enjoying life. And enjoying life is we all have the God-given right to enjoy life. Yes, it is wonderful. And there's, you know, there's the festival atmosphere, you know, there's the food trucks, there's the music on the stage. So there's like this, this feeling of, of summer and of leisure, and it's wonderful to be there. But it's also wonderful to see such a big spectrum of human expression. You have, you know, you have a lot of organizations that have booths there. And then you have, you have us who is a church, and then you have um, the kink parts and and all the other parts you know you have like the whole breadth of human expression and to be all together there to me that's meaningful no it very much is and brianna you've been sitting here recording this all and ready to put it on and i know you have some observations i'm sure by listening to what is fascinating and the dedication of um, both of our guests today i i gotta say that the dedication, the devotion to this. This is not an easy task. I facetiously said an easy task. It is not. You're organizing an incredible event, and we're doing it with the dignity that it deserves, the fun that it deserves, and the, um, I would have to say, the dedication to the theology that it deserves. So with all that in mind, anything you want to add or ask? Yeah, I think that what our two guests really highlight is just how authentic the Episcopal presence is at Pride. Like for me, that's my favorite part of us being there is it just feels right and it feels good. And I think that you two just highlighted it. You both mentioned so many things that I'm looking forward to. So my mm -hmm. question is, do you both have one thing that you are really looking forward to about this year's Pride? Ooh, good question. Why didn't I think of that? Why don't you talk to me before these podcasts <laughs> and give me that so that I can make it sound like I'm asking the really good question? <laughs> All right, that would be a good place to wrap up here. So let's start with Terry Palmer, who comes to us from St. James Church and has been handling the parade answer the question please yeah um i'd love to and before i answer really quickly i have to thank ingrid too because she's helping me so much with camp sure. tuttle people and so and the staff at the diocese thank you so much um what i'm looking forward to is maybe some clouds would be nice <laughs> <laughs> and so it won't be quite so cold or so, quite, quite so hot i mean we know it's going to be hot some good walking shoes um just you know good fellowship with all my other Episcopal friends and um that that's good I think it's just going to be a great day a cloud helps the rainbow too doesn't it the yeah, little mist go. of the cloud wouldn't that be great a double rainbow over the whole city during from the your mouth to God's perfect. ears yeah <laughs> yeah I, I we'll see if um if that's possible order that one up okay and Danny um uh the Reverend Danny Lee of uh, St. Mary's in Provo uh, who is handling and doing the chair work on the um, uh, festivities that were surrounding the booth. Uh, what is your one thing you're looking forward to more than anything? Um, one thing that's always exciting is um, to look out in the crowd. And sometimes people will recognize the Episcopal Church and there will be like this look of pleasant surprise on their face. Yeah. That's my favorite thing, you know, uh, that that look of recognition and excitement that accompanies it. Well, we are the Episcopal Church, and this is the Podcapalians, our podcast, where we look at some of the unique, unusual, but really, in this case, wonderful moments that we all share as a diocese, as a people, as a group of congregations, and as uh, those who praise um, the diversity and those that celebrate the God's work on earth here in this type of, of uh, festivity and parade. 
Good luck to you all on the parade. Wear soft shoes that you can walk in and um, blessings to all. Thank you for listening.